All right. What's up, guys? Got Carlton Lear, uh, the one and only on the call today. Thank you for blessing me with your presence. Uh, Carlton, if you could just tell me who you are, where you're from, and kind of your journey before symmetry, just what you did. Yeah. Awesome to be here. Appreciate you, uh, Mason. Let's see. Carlton Lear, director KJ, Kishan and Johanna Monteith, Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, before I got to symmetry, I was, I've always been in life insurance sales. I was with a practice company that Kishan came from and some of the owners came from. So we have a history of, um, in the past. And, and um, before that, I worked at a company, American No Income No Life. I mean, American Income Life and um, back home in Chicago. So um, yeah, that was my little, that's my little stint. Don't really have a job history, but I, I do have a commission only history, so. Awesome, man. And what, what brought you into symmetry? Just Kishan bringing you over here from the other practice company or? Yeah, it's fun. Um, I actually called Casey because I knew Casey. Me and him were close before and Brandon. And, um, but I knew them when they were producers and managers at another company, the practice company. And I actually got terminated, fired from another job um, with the practice company because I wrote up clients in New Orleans um, and they, were, they had amendments, two amendments. The amendments were these two clients um, were that they would get approved with their insurance without the disability writer. And all you have to do is have them sign. Well, I hired somebody to cut and paste the signature as if they were the client. So basically forgery, pretty much. And um, they asked me, they said, do you know about this? I go, yeah. And uh, they took me out and they said, we won't let you know. Let's, we're going to go back in the room. But if you say, yeah, you're going to be terminated. I was like, so just, just want to let you know, if, you're, if you say yes, you will be terminated. I'm like, okay. So I went in the room. So Carlton, did you know about this? I go, yes. They go, <laughs> so I get terminated. So I called Casey, um, told him the same thing, the truth. And he's like, he just, he was different though. He was CEO now. At this company, he left the, co the company I was earlier, a few years before. And he goes, if you ever do that here, you're terminated so fast. So I've never done anything here, but never needed to. But I am, um, that's how I joined here. Um, I joined Linwood Watkins, um, who was, me and him are close. He's like, my, that's my guy right there, Lynn Watkins. I've been with Lynn Watkins forever. And then went through a journey of spirituality um, over the last couple of years with my pastors, stuff like that, with atheists to Christianity, just a lot, a big overhaul in my life, emotionally and spiritually and relationally. And um, I asked Lynn's permission if I could be on Kishan's team on November 10th, 2020. And he goes, they don't do that. They don't change teams, uh, which I found out they don't do. But uh, Lynn looked at me in a spiritual way and goes, yep, because I know what you're doing it for. Um, and so I joined Kishan's team with me and two other people. Um, and the two other people were new. We haven't written anything. We just joined Kishan's team November 10th, 2020. And I've known Kishan since the practice company too in 2007. I remember me and him used to catch up and go, we'd catch up at conferences, two different teams. He was in Carolina. I was in Chicago, but we'd catch up once a year. How you doing, man? Good. How's your team? Good. How's your team? Good. How's your girlfriend? Oh, I dumped her. Yeah, I dumped her too. I dumped mine too. We used to go back and forth. So I knew Kishan before he was married. I mean, we used to, we used to hang out. So we, me and Kishan were boys and it, the relationship was authentic. We were always honest with each other. We were always transparent. We were always vulnerable. We were always emotional. We always cried. So Kishan, we were just, that was my guy. So Kishan now is so different from the Kishan then. The guy who didn't look above his shoelaces. The guy who was insecure. The guy who didn't know if he wanted to date or not date. The guy who was still talking about maybe going back into cooking and culinary arts. So, but now I see Kishan now. And now that's my guy, man. That's that's my boy. So uh, I'm just glad and blessed that God's put me with him. And you know, I'm in this journey and I uh, made a commitment to myself and to Lynn that I'm going to grow. The most honoring thing I could do is grow. The most disrespectful thing I could do is not grow. So since uh, January of this year, that's what we've been trying to do, you know. I'd say it's going pretty good. I was definitely impressed with how uh, you guys put on that Nashville boot camp. That, that's a uh, pretty life changing for a lot of those people coming in there for the first time, or even in the symmetry. What, not your, not what is your secret success or your secret sauce, or anything like that. But what, what do you think is like the, what makes those events so impactful to new people? Like if I was just coming on because at that, that, that was inspiring even to me to go write more business. Like at, at, but you guys' conversion rate, like it's so impressive at the end of the day and you guys are so humble about it. That's what I love. Like, 
what's the infrastructure or the system that you guys put in place, like the backbones behind these in-person events, that's a direct correlation with all these, you might see people bringing in 50 people a month and having one new writer out of that. It seems like everybody you guys are bringing on are translating to new writers. What's kind of the backbones to that? Yeah, they say everything rises and falls on leadership. And uh, it starts with the head, Kishan. There's many leaders, but there's one head. Don't mistake it. There's one head. Um, there's many leaders inside this organization, but there's one head. Um, so it started with when I got started here, I, I got involved with Kishan and I had wage garnishments. Um, so I was like, my wage garnish, I was getting paychecks. What's going on? So I call these insurance carriers. I go, oh, your wages are garnished because you owe taxes in North Carolina from 2015. I was like, I didn't even live in North Carolina in 2015. I moved in 2014. They go, well, you're going to have to prove some, we need you to prove your, uh, prove that you, maybe some receipts or banks or address where you live. I go, no problem. I even got my insurance license resident in Texas. I showed everything. They go, you're right. This shouldn't happen. So they reversed the wage garnishments, but I still haven't been refunded for all that money that I missed. So I was two months. I came to Kishan. I was two months behind. Couldn't pay my bills. Couldn't do anything. So Kishan started to buy leads for me. He bought leads. I go, I'll pay you back. Well, he bought leads. I paid him back, but I didn't have enough money to reinvest. Finally, he kept every week. He was buying me leads. I was paying him back, but he was trying to just get the motor going. And then I finally got the motor going about a month and a half in. Kishan gave me $2,000 worth of leads. I was about to pay it back, but I used that money to buy more leads and I got production going. And then I used that money to, uh, when I was uh, training Holly to set my, Holly Jacobs as an appointment center to set my appointments, I was paying her in lead credits, really, Kishan's lead credits. I was supposed to pay it back, but I was paying Holly. And the more Holly was setting appointments, the more I, I was having $20,000 production weeks, like three weeks, 20, three, 20 app weeks in a row. I'm like, I would throw 20,000 three weeks in a row. Now I'm making money. I can afford to pay Kishan back but I didn't, I paid um, for recruiting. And then after that money, I was supposed to pay Kishan and the money I was making from Holly, Holly became a 10 to 15,000 week producer. Then she brings a, a person on. And then I was using Kishan's same 2000 seed money. To, I said, I'm gonna start a meeting. So I started a meeting locally. And then I, in Austin, I threw one in Austin and invest that money into Austin meeting with 55 people who showed up downtown during the pandemic. We did a big meeting locally for a bunch of agencies that weren't even ours, part of Edward Pritchett's. Was it like a corporate overview? It was a corporate overview boot camp. It was a corp. It was uh, it was the uh, harvest to or uh, it was the uh, symmetry symmetry um, conference in March or April. I think it was March April. I think it was March or April. But it was a symmetry conference March and with Matthew McConaughey and everything. And had a friend Eric Prebula who ordered barbecue uh, barbecue food. Texas barbecue had a DJ come in and we just investing heavy in that stuff. And so we did this stuff. That was Kishan's seed money. So Kishan seed money, I was supposed to pay it back, went to me, catch up on my two, three months behind the bills to Holly Jacobs. She started bringing a team into an, uh, the Edward Pritchard organization. So they started helping our team out. And then I said, no, hell no, I'm going to do my own meeting now. And so I said, where do I got people right now? Okay, Holly's in Nashville. She's got three people. So I jumped in a plane and went to Nashville, met with people like two days before. I, I said, I'm going to Nashville. I, and I came to Nashville, did a, I called Sarah Pappas, my homegirl, Sarah Pappas. I go, I, I, I'm broke. I need your office. She goes, Mike, come to my house, grab my keys. You know where I live. Come to my house, grab my keys. I have homecoming weekend with my daughter. Um, so I'm going to be tied up uh, or prom with my daughter. So I'm going to be tied up this weekend, but grab my keys and just put and then go to the office, just clean everything up. So I went to her office all by ourselves, brought strangers to the meeting. And we only had six of us, four on my team and two on, um, on another girl, Christy Miller, who's Nate's the owner of Kishan. And so it started there in May. Still have Kishan's two thousand dollars. Three months gone by, he hasn't asked me back for it yet. I go, I'm gonna take this two thousand dollars and roll it into uh, the next month. I roll it into June meeting. I invited Kishan's team. Now we have not four people plus two in Kishan's group. Now we have nine people, but Kishan's team brought fifteen. So I'm inviting all Kishan's managers. So and then July happens, we have twenty five of our team there, and Kishan's team has thirty five. So it just started to grow. And before you knew it, everybody was coming to the boot camps and we were turning agents over so fast, making money. So how it started with the heart of Kishan, because his investment, I want to give a return on investment back to him. I still haven't paid Kishan back his $2,000. Um, so from January to March, I think my team did like 40,000, my total 40,000 total from January to March. From January to April, I think we did, I think we're at like 80,000. Uh, so up to April, we were at 80,000. From May to current, we've done an extra 900,000. 
And nine that's because hundred thousand extra of team volume because of Kishan's two thousand dollar investment. Oh man! So it's it shows it's Kishan's two two thousand dollar investment to a guy who was two to three months behind on bills because of his wage garments that had nothing to do with them. But I stayed obedient and I honored God and I obeyed him and I obeyed Kishan and I promised, but, but Kishan didn't ask for it, that $2,000. So Kishan, I think, has made six figures back on that $2,000 that I never paid him. But I, I still have, to this day, I still have that $2,000 set aside in a separate bank that I haven't touched. I just parlay it every time. That's my seed money every time I go. So Nashville's costing me overall myself and, and everything else about $43,500 of investment on leads, dinners, lunches, alcohol, coffee. Um, hotel meeting rooms, other people paying for other people's hotel rooms, everything out of that um, Jeopardy winnings. Like we have Jeopardy at the, at the uh, Symmetry Jeopardy we have with just at uh, Kishan's uh, Nashville Boot Camp Academy. And I and the winners aren't on our team. They've, our winners have never been on our team. So I'm buying lead credits for other people's teams. So I'm putting that same two grand as parlay. That's how it started, the heart of it all. That's where it started, which led to vulnerability. Everybody being vulnerable about what their insecurities or shortcomings or where they're coming from. Number two, honesty and transparency. Not going to lie about how good or bad they are. Prevented ego. Number three, if people became humble, hungry, and honest. We were, we were just going through the motions. Then everybody wanted to help everybody. Then it led into, Kishan does this thing called the Daily Connect Call. And the Daily Connect Call basically is where you get on every single day and you talk about some things positive that happen. And what your goals are, monthly goals, your weekly goals, your daily goals, something. How can we do that? How can we duplicate Kishan's thought process in the meeting? So, of course, at the meeting, we get together and we, we all, all the teams get together. We do all one big, a big team one. And um, it got crazy where it got, we took that little seed of Kishan's daily connect call to, huh, you're going to, all these agents, these managers are going to be running appointments. So while they're running appointments, we want all the new agents to come and sit next to them and watch them run appointments. Because the biggest, the reason the turnover ratio started happening, we started converting agents is because the biggest anxiety people had was leads. If I buy money on leads, I, I, I can't afford leads. Are leads going to work? So we would have them sit next to us and watch us close deals left to right on that Monday and Tuesday boot camp, the first Monday and Tuesday of the month, which is strategic because it sets your month off. There's no coma like carrying over. And before you know it, um, people were converting over, people were buying leads, coming in, buying aliens from the beginning, investing heavy, going crazy, plugging in, asking questions, being vulnerable, being humble, hungry, and honest. And we just duplicated Kishan's personality. And at that point, Kishan's like, I'm going to make a trip to, I'm going to make a trip to Nashville. So he came to his first, it's, a, it's the Monteith Nashville Bootcamp Academy. And it's an academy where new agents get together. They can learn how to produce. They can learn how to build a business, but they learn real business principles. They don't learn, oh, we're gonna, it's just going to hire a couple writing agents. No, you learn volume, not production. New agents can learn production, but experienced agents can learn volume. And Kishan used his wisdom, and it's blown up since. So the conversion ratio is high because Kishan's heart, because that $2,000 investment that he invested in me, God has spread that seed in, and he started to feed 5,000 men uh, with fish and, and, and loaves of bread it's been crazy but dude, that, that is awesome uh and how do you like get people not even in your direct downline to be that vulnerable and work like the the camaraderie that's that's just that's rare in all honesty let's be honest like it's oh, just it, rare it's easy because the people who are supposed to be vulnerable leadership are and that shows you the people who are in leadership are the ones who are close. The ones who are closest to Kishan, there's no, there's no turmoil or drama between the parties. My like cross line teams, we good. Uh, also, it started that way because I, when I first got involved, I was like, hey, Jordan Howe, I need help. Jordan was, he was a key leader at that time. And I, but he was bigger than I was. <laughs> I had three people, two extra people plus me. So we were doing like $6,000 a month, $10,000 and $14,000. So I asked him for help. He trained my team how to set appointments. Um, and then I reached out to um, uh, Rachel Burton. Um, I reached out to Wade Shu, who wasn't even a key leader. I mean, it just we started people who were, had perceived titles were reaching out to everyone. And they, once they saw that, they go, man, they're reaching out to me. And these are AZ owners who are, I'm like, I'm an AZ owner for a title, but I don't have any volume. And I don't have any writing agents. They're like, what do you mean? What happened? Have you been here a while? Oh, yeah. I blew them all off. How'd you blow them all off? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I wanted to be the leader and not to follow. 
when they heard me tell the truth, I was insecure because I want to look good on leaderboards, but I didn't want to, I want to, I didn't want to help people go on discipleship through the, bring them to the symmetry system, but then stay with them all the way through until they get, they get out. And right when they're about to take off, get off their boat. Cause that's their story to celebrate, not yours. I didn't do that. So now with Kishan, he did that with me, gave me that, that money for leads and he stayed up there until I got profitable. And I, he jumped off the boat and now I've taken off and it makes me look good. But we really know the truth is again, there's many leaders, but there's one head and everybody wants to be vulnerable. Everybody wants just, here's where I'm at. Because we know that if we don't tell, if we don't tell the truth about where we're at, then the enemy can use that and go to work on us. And he can turn, he can turn people against each other. He can turn, he run, he take, he grows our insecurities. We're like, no, we're not going to do that. You ain't going to win this. We ain't going to win this battle. I don't got time to restart. Nobody's that. We all are very impatient. That's another thing. Kishan's very impatient. And I don't mean with relationships. I mean with process. He's very impatient. Not with people, but with, with process and systems. If we're not moving together, he's impatient. That's one thing. He did two things he doesn't like. He doesn't like liars. He don't like liars. And we don't mean like pathologically like, oh, Mason, I told you this and you. He don't like you. That, he don't care about that. That's on them. A lot of people lie all the time. He doesn't like people who lie to themselves. You want to make Kishan really uncomfortable when he's boiling underneath the surface? I was having a conversation one time and he's like, so how did you get in the situation? Well, bad financial choices. It's just crazy, man. Just bad financial choices. He's, uh-huh, uh-huh. So what else? I'm like, just that's pretty much it, man. He goes, okay, well, let me know when you want to talk next time. We can make some progress next time. What he was really saying was, let me know when you want to be honest with yourself and say it out loud. And when I said it out loud, okay, here's what really happened. It sounds embarrassing, but Wade DeGarnes, it really had nothing to do with me. Here's my documentation. Hey, Kishan, here's the truth. Um, the reason people aren't following me is because I'm telling them my presentation. I'm doing my system and I'm, I'm blocking every other team away from my team because I want to be the answer. And look at us growing. We can grow without everybody. We don't need everybody else. And Kishan goes, and I said, oh crap. And he goes, you feel better now? I'm like, not really. He goes, all right, well, at least I know. So you ready to start now? I'm like, yeah. And he started with me with grace. He could have slammed me right there and pushed me, put me at a distance. Nope. He pulled me in closer. And the test of it was not what Kishan was going to do. He was going to show grace anyway. He was waiting to show grace. He was waiting to show mercy and forgiveness. But I, I didn't I didn't let him in. And the second I let him in is when all the growth happened. And right when that happened, I was like, oh, hell no. Everybody, go up front. So we all go up front right now. We just get it out of the way because if we don't, the enemy used that. And that's when it gets, that's, we don't, that's why none of us get involved in politics. Because we go, no, this is where I'm at, Kishan. Carlton, here's what my marriage stuff looks like. I'm like, you need to talk to Kishan. Uh, here's what our financial situation looks like. Here's what I did over there. Oh my gosh, I had a bat. I was the wrong person at my other company. People are just honest, and that's how it all grew. Dude, I, I love that. I I definitely have been reaching out to him a lot more. He, uh, I just want to say thank you from like the bottom of my heart. You, you guys treated me like I was gold there. Like I felt super appreciated. You made me feel like a rock star. So I I definitely appreciate that. Uh, all that aside, like how many downlines do you actually have now? Like how big, how big is your agency? Not that big. Um, so Kishan, I'm just, I'm telling you a lot about, I say Kishan, 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 because right now I've been engulfed in discipleship with him. I mean, I just follow the good shepherd. He's a good shepherd because he bears good fruit. His good fruit he bears is on other people's trees, not his own. That's how I know. So right now uh, it's about 21 riders. Um, so yeah, in March I had three riders. In June I had like seven riders. And then that's July explosive had... growth, though. Like that, that's impressive. And and where did you get the riders from? Like what what kind of recruiting practices do you have? Are you like utilizing a lot of zip recruiter? Or are you mainly warm market kind of guy? Uh, both cold market and warm market. So when I see. The strategy I have is when people get cold market, the goal of cold market to me is to get to their warm market so I can solidify. So some strategies I use is, because I Kishan's big on not putting pressure on people, but putting pressure on the process. It's very offensive. You put pressure on people. He just does not like that. And so how I do it is so, Mason, you hire me. I come in and I go, okay, I, I, I'm here. And you go, great. I'm going to get my pre-licensing class. You go, great. Okay, Carlton, here's what I'll tell you. Here's what I'll tell you, Carlton. Um, I'll, if you pass your pre-license in the first 10 days, you get refunded your $40, the pre-licensing course. Uh, once you sign up for conference, which is $150, um, once you sign up for conference, if you have three to five people get licensed in, by December 31st in your team, 
I will refund you your, your $150 conference ticket. But if you have, and if you have three to five of those people go to conference, I will pay your round trip ticket to conference. So now the trip is free. You're like, wait, what? I say, wait, what? So I go back. So if I oh, hold them and they start writing it down, they're like, okay, so I'm like, I can get refund of my $40 if I pass my pre-license in the first 10 days. If I pay for the conference ticket, which is 150 bucks, sign up for conference. But if I hire, if I bring three to five people to my team and they get licensed by December 31st, yeah, and you and and you'll help me, Mason. You'll basically you'll like you'll you'll be like, no, I'll, and I'll help you contract them. We'll get them trained. Don't worry about that. Which all we're going to do is take them to Nashville, yep. and and then. But if you do that, then what I'll do is uh, I'll refund your round trip ticket if you get three to five. Really? Yep. And what we'll do is we'll pay for your hotel if you get ten people there. So you mean I get a chance to get a free trip and all stuff if I okay? Who do who do I kill? And everybody's going crazy. So it's fun because we're incentivizing because it's for their benefit. And then we show them the lead map. This is why we're looking at the one point two million leads overall that are left over last week in inventory. Every week we do interviews. We do interviews on Zooms. So they see face to face. They can see the map. They go, oh my gosh, that's all the, that's how, that's not normal. Why do you have all these leads left over? Because we don't have enough people. And that, and that's how we get people to, hey, tell you what, go to Nashville. We get everybody to Nashville. They just go to Nashville and they see, meet Kashan. They see the culture. And at that point, they're, next month, they're bringing people to Nashville. The next month, they're bringing people, they're people's people. To bring, it just starts to compound and it becomes natural that Denver is natural. The, so you're basically funneling them to in-person events where they get hand like the hands-on training. I think is by far one of the best parts. They they learn it right there. Like it, it just clicks. So that, that's something I was super like taken aback by because at, I'll be honest. Like each agency does things different, and not all of them work as effectively as what you guys are doing. I mean, I haven't been around that long, but I, I just I notice things. Uh, that is awesome though, man. What does you guys' uh, agency do per month now, like volume? Um, you know, we issued so one last, last three months was 143, 151. And last month we did 86, 84, we had, you know, two weeks for a conference. We, a lot of us stayed an extra few days, an extra week. Um, and then, um, but right now, we're, I mean, right now we're with, Two weeks left. We're at a hundred thousand right now, month to date. So probably another fifty thousand coming. Yeah, we're averaging about thirty-seven thousand our weeks now. So it's it's gradually moving up. Like our old highs are now our new lows. So that's what we, that's what we focus on. Every three. That's one thing we always talk on in our team and in the business in the business development, not on sales or recruiting or structure. No, on businesses. Every four months, your old highs must become your new lows. And so we track it out. We're like, well, the average agent does this much per month. Okay, gotcha. So we look at, okay, well, because we look at four months ago. I mean, four months ago, we were we were doing about twelve thousand dollars a week, you know. And then we went, okay, and then uh, and then sometimes we had sometimes our high was like thirty three thousand. Like we had three highs at thirty three thousand. That was four months ago. So twelve thousand to thirty three thousand. Now that old high is now becoming our new low. Now we're between 33 and 37,000 as our new as our new low. So we're every four months we know so we're tracking every agent every agent. Yeah, well, uh, Mike Pappas says uh, what we measure multiplies. I, I love that. I've never heard that until our conference. And I, I, him and Sarah are some of the most down to earth people I've ever met, dude. Super passionate. I love it. Uh, what has symmetry kind of done for your life now? You, you went from having your wages garnished to like being broke to mm-hmm. now like what, what is your life currently like now what has symmetry done for you and what has Kishan done for you uh symmetry has done a lot so Kishan's done a lot I mean you know I start off the year with like 35 to 4 thousand dollars a month I hit a high month of 31 thousand dollars a month passive and this five and a half month blitz I mean but I'll tell you this um it's not the money because I'm, I'm still broke. I mean, I'm at zero because what I'm doing is I'm reinvesting that money. The more money Everything, I am, yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to save this year. I'm not, I'm here to still live on the edge because I, 18 months later, I don't want to live on the edge and, and I don't want to eat my seed and I want to, I want to harvest. I want to, I want to, I want to enjoy it, but the best way to enjoy it is making sure you get other people there. So what has symmetry done for me right now? It's put me in two things. Number one, in an investment mentality. And number three, it, that symmetry has done for my life right now is create a healthy community. Um, and it's been amazing. And the best way I can get back to symmetry is make sure I duplicate and create a healthy community. So just, just by me duplicating a healthy community, it's been amazing. But I think the real thing is where my life is at right now, 
I'm no longer chasing success or achievement and I'm starting to chase fulfillment. Um, that's a big thing for me. It's not, I don't care about looking good. I care about feeling good. Um, it's like that, that's the little parable of the $30,000 millionaire. You know, that, you know, that guy, he whips out his fourth expired credit card. He says, drinks are on me. And he pays for drinks for everybody at the bar. And then he goes home empty handed. And the moral of the story is this. If he spend more time actually preparing to get rich as opposed to acting rich, maybe he'd be rich. And so symmetry has taught me right now to do prepare. I'm in a season of preparation. I'm in a, a season of sowing. And uh, until God tells me what the, what the harvesting season is, I won't stop. So just keep moving, man. That's awesome, man. Uh, Carlton, I appreciate your time. Thank you for jumping on here with me. If you had uh, one big piece of advice for anybody new looking at joining symmetry, like, like should I make this step into this opportunity? Uh, what, what would your words kind of be to them? If you're brand new looking at symmetry for the first time, um, I would ask yourself, there's a bunch of couple questions you can ask you. The first one is this, can the, do I trust these people with my spouse or my kids if I wasn't around? That's the first thing. It's a character thing. The second thing is they're probably asking us right now is can these people help me? Can I be open with these people? And can they take me where I need to get? The answer is yeah. Uh, I would just look at the culture. I look at the culture because symmetry is much better on the inside than marketed on the outside. And that's actually backwards. And I, I love it that way. Um, it's a, it's well, a when you work from the inside out in life, it, mm -hmm. you find out your, your who, your what, and your why. Yeah. You're working backwards. And that, that's, I've never even thought about it like that, dude. Like I, I've learned a lot from this. So thank you, man. Yeah, uh, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, no me. problem, dude. I can't wait to uh, see you guys again in a Nashville boot camp. I'll, I'll definitely be bringing some people in there in the future because I, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a little jealous. No, it's no uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of uh, Kishan's organization. I, I think I ended up lucking out. So, uh, dude, you thank do. you so much for your time, Carlton. I'll let you get back to your day. Uh, this is awesome, man. See ya. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, guys.